Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Novid Player, and welcome to episode 28 of the Novid Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators and communities inside of the VRChat platform. I'm your host, and with me today, I have the owner of the Midnight Opera community, uh, Taya Hunter. Taya, welcome to the podcast. Hope you're doing well. Hello! I'm good. I'm good. I, I exist, you know? Awesome. Yeah, of course. So, you know, first and foremost, for the general listening audience at home, what exactly is, you know, the Midnight Opera? The Midnight Opera, we are an 18 plus safe work uh, theater based community. So we are a essentially an entertainment center and bar. We host open mics. At some point, we plan on having our own actual like events and whatnot, for example, on uh, I can't. I can't, I can't, I just, I lost the date. I'll, uh, September 6th, September 6th, um, will be have one of my perform performers will be doing like an hour long entertainment thing. And she does voice acting, improv singing, et cetera, et cetera. But after that, the bigger plan is to essentially have our own stage productions, not so much full on plays, but we'll be having singers, musicians, dancers, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not just them coming onto the stage doing their own thing. It's when do the curtains rise? When do the curtains fall? Do they need some sort of like particle effects for those who don't know what a particle effect is? It's basically like a stage effects, but like in VR. I got you, and I got there is a lot planned, a lot we want to do. Sweet. No, that's awesome. So I guess one of the very first questions, you know, because you you're one you founded the community. So kind of to deep dive into your origins a little bit, you know, what got you started into VR chat in the first place? Uh, what got me started into VR chat? I was, you know, I, I forget what, who they're called, but you know, like those videos of like with like the toothbrush dudes that all the little kids uh, try to mimic and everyone hates because they're all the toothbrushes, they're, they're annoying kids. I, uh, I found those dudes on like Facebook on something and VR chat looked cool, it looked interesting. And in one of their videos, they mentioned that, uh, someone was PC only, they were kind of making fun of him for it. I'm like, wait, you can do it on PC? It's on Steam? Oh, cool. So I got it on Steam. And eventually I ended up making a bunch of friends. And for my birthday, they actually helped me say, helped me get money for a quest for my birthday. And some, like, I'd say about two years after that, I actually met my husband on this app. And we are now living together, married IRL. And I use main, I usually use his index and full body. Oh, wow. Fair enough. I would say, yeah, that's definitely, definitely a step up from, you know, just the regular old quest. So I guess one of the, one of the things I want to ask you, you know, so what got you into like the community side of VR chat, you know, what, what made you go from learning about the platform into like, you know, communities in general? Um, I'll be honest. Uh, my community kind of started off as a, a kind of a joke. It's like, you know, like all like the, adult clubs and whatnot and i was jo and i was listening to the fan of the opera and i'm like it would be really funny if we had like an opera house themed club but it, it but you know like those big fancy boxes where like the people sit in but like it's just those for where the people sit and there's a giant chandelier and from the bottom it looks like a normal chandelier and from the top it's a stage with a pole in the center and that's where you'd have like all your dancers and whatnot so it started off as a joke and then i met someone actually said he'd fund me for uh, a world as long as we made it safe for work and i'm like oh okay so make a normal theater essentially and again things didn't work out very well but i already had the blueprints and uh then it was a matter of finding a world creator which i did and he has done a fantastic job oh the world is absolutely gorgeous actual theater upstairs downstairs curtains rise and fall and, and we just kind of took off from there i gotcha i gotcha so in the sense of like um, you know, cause it is kind of a, like a bar slash theater. So what made you want to like combine mm -hmm. those ideas, like f into like a club and an opera house essentially? Yeah. Uh, it's more of a, I wouldn't say it's a club. I'd say it's more of an entertainment center. I was thinking of kind of like more of like the dine and watch places, you know, kind of like as a dine and watch as, to, and I also wanted it to not just be, Hey, I'm going to be looking at the stage, seeing all these different performers for an hour, because at the end of the day, me personally, I don't have that kind of attention span sometimes. I know a lot of people don't have that attention span because, well, let's be honest, it's VR chat. Um, <laughs> somebody understand. 
So I just wanted to have something more interactive, something as a kind of side thing and to kind of like encourage people to essentially interact with each other uh, as well as enjoy themselves and relax and like have live music or live skits, et cetera, et cetera. I gotcha. I gotcha. So, you know, out of curiosity, you, you know, kind of to deep dive into it. Um, so what's like a typical, like from your POV, like what is in a typical event run like? Like what exactly, you know, okay. from like a start to end of an event, what exactly goes on? All right. So the only events we've been doing at the moment are open mics just because I need more staff for more like performance based stuff or like uh, hangout events, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so essentially it's, I'll say it's to start off, it's very calm, very relaxed. Um, so how it works is we have a rope system kind of like in like a bunch of like uh, uh, bouncer places and whatnot. They have like the red ropes that they open and close. And uh, I have my security. They go, hey, how old are you? What's your age? Okay, cool. You're an adult. Come on in. They come on in. They go to the main floor and I make an, and there's usually music playing in the background. I usually like pick a jazz playlist of some sort just to kind of get everyone into a more relaxed mood. I make the announcement, hey, we're going to wait till the uh, event fills up a little bit more before we get started. And then once the event starts, I go to the stage, the curtains rise, and I explain, welcome to I go, welcome to the Midnight Opera Open Mics. If you would like to perform, please line up on the left side of the stage. There is an invisible staircase. Once you come and once it is your turn, come up to the stage, perform. And then if you would like to perform again, finish up, go back and go back to the line. And they just go through the motions on their own. There's no hassle, no need for me to keep reminding them. They just get in line, go up there, and then go right back in line as soon as they finish. And they have a good time. They enjoy it. They like performing for other people. Um, I thought more people would be more interested in the bars, but no, they actually like sitting in the theater seats we have and watching and listening and just kind of winding down and enjoying themselves. But, like, it's very calm, very relaxed. So far, no issues. We usually get about... After after Project Community, we started getting, like, 30 people per event, essentially. Oh, that's awesome. That's great to hear that you guys have, you know, grown since uh, Project Fest 2024. Um, so, yeah. out of curiosity, you know, so what what kind of drove the, the Opera House idea? Was there any, like, inspiration, like, kind of to push the opera house because you know realistically you could have made like any type of theater because there's numerous types of theaters out there you know so was there any inspiration when it came to specifically the opera house side itself uh it started off with i just wanted a dramatic entrance so you've been to my world before we have a chandelier that descends uh i wanted that originally as an avatar animation like just descending upon a chandelier and then it just kind of built around that and it's like a normal theater would have a chandelier an opera house would and then of course i was also inspired by phantom of the opera hence the opera house and the descending chandelier that's kind of where i had the idea and i also picked an opera house because they're honestly way more beautiful they have a lot more going on there's more detail and i just I just like it. It's fa it's fancy, it's pretty, and it's shiny. Fair enough, fair enough. You know, so I, that's really cool that, you know, because with an opera house, right, it's more majestic than like a regular theater, you know, so to have that inside of VR chat, it's definitely a, you know, it's a culture shock, at least from what my, my experiences is with VR chat, you know, it's definitely a more uh, variety of culture side, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask, cause you know, you, you were talking, talking about some of the open mics, you know, so about if you had to estimate, like how many, you know, people do you have like per event on open mics usually like performers wise, I mean. Performers wise lately, it's been a little slow just because of all the events going on. So there's been a little bit of like kind of slow down time. However, despite that, everyone's days and they stay like an extra hour even after the event ends just kind of talking to each other enjoying each other's company which i think speaks more volumes that people are willing to stay and see things grow and improve despite it being a little slow but on our biggest night we had like i'd say about six performers and they just kept going through the motions just going through the motions over and over again like the entire time they had it was wonderful it was fun 
Fair enough. Yeah, I was going to say, it's definitely, you know, because there are so many different types of performance groups out there. Um, so I guess one of the questions I wanted to ask was, is like, why, you know, not why, that's a weird way of phrasing it, but what, uh, you know, what, besides Project Community, you know, what other ventures have you taken to kind of like, you know, advertise your community? Because there's a lot of performance communities out there. So out of curiosity, what are some things that you have done in that regard when it comes to like getting your name out there? Well, of course, while well, I went on the Metaverse Dengang podcast, now I'm on your podcast, I'm kind of getting, I'm making contacts where I can. Um, I'm mainly kind of just trying, my main thing is talking to people. Uh, at some point, we are going to actually be starting up a TikTok. We just need to have at least enough footage that I can kind of like manually kind of put it out there and then make more content in the background without kind of running out and going, hey, uh, we kind of need a last minute skit and like screwing up my own algorithm and such. But so we are going to be getting into social media at some point, but uh, sometimes I'm not even the one talking to people, just going up to people, be like, "Hey, here's what I'm doing, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. It's it's a lot of friends actually who do the talking for me. A lot of my performers I have met were actually through other people going to different worlds and running up to me like, "Hey, this is the opera house lady," and like bringing them to my events, which honestly was the most shocking thing because I thought I'd be kind of doing it on my own, but no. Just, they don't work these people don't work for me they just absolutely love what i'm doing they go talk to people bring them to me and then of course they end up joining the community and okay. since project community we have grown i'd we basically tripled start of project community we were at 107 now we're like 309 i'd say that's a decent growth that i personally did not expect like i'm not expecting it to be super fast i expect it to be slow but even that alone that's not bad I gotcha. So, and that's really cool that you're, you're, you're making strides into uh, going into like social media side. So I guess kind of one of the things I want to ask in that regard, um, because there's, you know, there's a lot of different social media platforms and you were talking about TikTok a little bit and, you know, kind of get into that side of things. Um, you know, so what, what would be at least for general listening audience side, you know, what would be some things to like, you know, you talked about skits a little bit, but what are some other things that you may be doing in that regard uh, when it comes to like social media side? You know, we talked about little skits and whatnot, but like, is there any other, you know, plans for it? Um, I'd probably, yeah, so skits are one of the things I want to do. It's just, I got to think of more because 3 a.m. shower thoughts are only going to get me so far, you know, but there, I'm also going to be having like people at the open mics recorded if they're, all, of course, if they're all right with it and it's not going to get me demonetized i've had people do uh rather um sexy parodies which are funny and are fine i just don't want to get demonetized <laughs> um and then of course we have musicians and whatnot uh video uh my friend uh one of my my friend socks are our main videographer person he wants to make an actual commercial for the opera house like he's trying to get all the footage he can he's also going to give me the footage for the social media and make like an actual uh commercial um i have recently ha and now it's just a matter of trying to not use copyrighted music on that end but uh, i also so for in regards to music wise for what we could use for the commercial i actually recently hired vanessa wolf um who you had on your podcast before for a custom song for the opera house as well so Awesome. Yeah, no, she makes she makes amazing music overall. So definitely a good choice when it comes to, um, you know, commissioning somebody. Yeah, you know, and I'm a little biased. I'll admit I'm a little biased because she did make some of my music <laughs> as well. But um, it's definitely one of those things that you know, there's so many amazing creators out there who make really good stuff for communities and stuff so it's definitely it's great to see that you know you're using that to your advantage um you know using vr chat creators to help with your community at least so i kudos on that part um one of the other things i wanted to ask was you know because because you said you've done quite a few events at this point um so one of the things i want to ask you know what uh ooh, excuse me um one of the things I wanted to ask was, was there ever like um, a particular moment when it came to your community events that has essentially been like a staple when it comes to 
like your events? Like, has there like a notable moment or, you know, maybe a meme of some sort um, that just kind of stuck and it's just kind of been like that, that, that moment that just kind of like stays within the midnight opera, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, definitely the Rick Astley cardboard cutouts. Uh, so for those who, yeah, for, because no one can see, but essentially I took a picture of Rick Astley and I drew his legs very badly and he has like little ballet shoes and we turned him into a cardboard cutout that actually stands. So I'll use, and there's a big one and there's a little one. And I usually go up to people going, hey, big or small, I won't elaborate. And they just pick one and I come out with this freaking Rick Astley cardboard cutout and they usually get a chuckle or someone will go AFK and I have 99 of these things. So as they're AFK, I just start surrounding them with these cardboard cutouts. Fair enough. And obviously we'll, we'll throw these on the screen as well, um, you know, but because there's there's a for that's a lot. First and foremost, that's a lot of cardboard cutouts. Um, <laughs> uh, specifically, ninety nine of the big ones, twenty of the little ones. That world creative just picked random numbers. That's insane. First and foremost, that is quite literally <laughs> insane. Um, so so yeah, I was gonna say with that right, um, and obviously you've had you know many different types of performers. Um, from what you were saying, so you know what is a way that you contact performers, or do they morally contact you? Like, what's what's kind of the process of like getting to perform like for the Midnight Opera? Essentially, um, people usually just kind of bring them to me, or I'll find them in like public worlds and be like, "Hey, you're really great. You want to be drafted." Uh, essentially, but if people bring them to me, what happens is I'm the one listening. I'm the one who gets the final say. Essentially, the easiest being acting because again, you don't have to be uh, uh, you don't have to be like an absolute professional, and like people will still enjoy it as long as you are funny and you can keep the skit going. People will absolutely love you. The hardest is singing because if your mic isn't very good and you sound glitchy, that's going to turn people away. If you are, I wouldn't say professional. But I'd say kind of like in between professional and amateur is kind of like what I'm looking for. But like if you are very clearly having your voice crack a lot, that can also turn people away. At the end of the day, we are having somewhat of a professional production. We want kind of like, I won't say the best of the best, but definitely better. We are reaching for essentially the stars, which is that, um, will, which is that burning passion to grow and improve and that spark to entertain when it comes to people so like every so they also have to be rather passionate about what they do i gotcha i gotcha um so you know out of curiosity because if i remember correctly uh the community hasn't been around for like too terribly long um i don't remember i don't remember if you told me the exact date of when it was started okay so technically it's been up for some months now However, because I didn't have anything to show for, I actually stopped when we got around like 70 people because I was kind of going around talking about what I'm doing, but I had nothing to show for and I didn't want to keep advertising if I don't have anything to like kind of show people. I didn't have any performers. I didn't have a world. After I got the world, um, which was like a couple weeks before Project Community, I'd say, uh, I started advertising again and we got up to 107 people by the time project community came around after in, within the time within the span of a week we grew by like 56 people because of project community and we didn't have our own booth or anything we were actually collaborated with the no friends friends club who let us use their booth and kind of like performed there so like it brought people to their booth to check it out and also got people interested in what we're doing and after that it just kind of grew to like 309 by the end of the month after project community we were at 256 so like we essentially doubled within a month after project community and then of course now we're at 309 and essentially uh my brain's crashing i lost my train of thought you're good <laughs> to remind me of the question so i can like keep going on my spiel i know where i stopped uh, but then i, I forgot what it was, it was going a, on about it was a, i mean you, you essentially answered it it was essentially like uh okay yeah you essentially answered it um so I was going to say, uh, okay, good. yeah, <laughs> so what are, what are some things that you're planning for the future, you know, to kind of continue the growth of the events, like, and to continue, like, moving forward as, like, a community? What are some of the things that you have currently in the works? 
Uh, one of the things I definitely want to do is just kind of normal hangout nights without any uh, security kind of asking for the age, because I noticed some people are a little more hesitant with the age thing, and which, like, is fine, but some of them make some of them make a big fuss, some of them are just like, I won't do it, I don't know this community, which is perfectly fine. Um, I have no qualms with that. If you don't, aren't comfortable with that, you don't have to join. However, I think by having, like, Wednesday night just kind of, like, Obviously, they're group public, so we'd still have them moderated and whatnot. It would encourage more people to come to the world, actually explore the world, and be a little more interested in what we're doing. And a little, and then they'd be a little more familiar, a little more comfortable doing the age verification, which we have to do as we are 18 plus. That would be the only time I'd allow minors in. However, obviously, if they are squeakers or super annoying, we'd kick them. Um, we'd make sure no adults or kids are doing anything weird. Uh, I'll be, but like it's just to kind of encourage more people to come to the world because I love because like even outside of my group I love seeing people use the world I love seeing them have like their own events their own stuff one time I was actually looking through my groups and there was a group one of the groups had my world with like 20 people in it and it was an adult group and they were doing like this little avatar contest just last week. There were like all these little kids. I didn't talk to them because again, they're minors. I don't want to personally associate with them if I can help it. Um, just because of the more adult space I am in. But I, I watched them for a little while and they were talking, they were doing like Epic the Musical and they were actually hashing out who's going to be what character. Should they descend upon the chandelier? Do they want special effects? It was super cute. They, they got to be like 13, 14. But apparently they do that pretty often. Like, I want to encourage that. I want to encourage more people to come to the world and to come to the community by having something a little bit more open and a little less restrictive. I gotcha. And, you know, kind of the, cause you were talking about, you know, them like recreating stuff, you know, has there ever been any thought processes as to kind of like go into that field when it comes to like production side um you know because you were talking about like doing skits and stuff but like you know with vr chat and this is something that me personally i would love to see um so i'm kind of projecting at this point but um you know i would love to see like maybe recreations of like uh maybe like a musical or you know a a, a broadway show or etc has there ever you know been any thought process in behind that has crossed my mind before however because the main thing i want to do is kind of like our main show you know i might as well explain what the main show is so essentially the main show is you have 10 slots each slot is two to five minutes each and you have a 20 minute intermission between and i'm your host i introduce you to the stage you do your thing and that includes skits dance dancing singing what uh what whatever maybe a video here or there that we pre-recorded in the opera house that wouldn't really work on the stage alone so like it would be recorded in different parts of the opera house um and but it's not just hey you come here do this it's when did the curtains rise when did they fall do you need special effects so that itself is an actual stage production on its own that itself is going to be a lot of work um especially since i have to actually especially since it's already hard enough to kind of have people able to do that more than once and multiple times because a lot of my performers they have a lot of other gigs so for something like an actual musical an actual play i would need a lot of really dedicated people it would take i would have to actually pick out who does what role who's perfect for this who's perfect for that and that can one cause a lot of drama because someone's upset they didn't get the part they want um to peep this is as much as i love vr chat as much as i love the community a lot of people on here are very flaky so like let's say last minute uh, i could risk last minute someone uh calling out on me and they're the lead and the back and the backup person isn't available either there's just a lot that can go wrong as and i because of what i plan to do on top of it which is eventually we're going to be doing ballroom events ballroom events would be the only thing paid because the money would either go directly to charity or into expanding the world itself for example i want to have a rose garden for a vip area but that would be like a separate payment plan and money which i don't have and then of course the hangout nights uh, possibly amateur nights. I've, if someone's been telling me I should do that. I've been looking into it, and then I'm still going to be doing the open mics on top of all of that. With all of those events and me running all of them, a play would just be a lot of extra work I cannot do that would not be feasible. 
That's fair. And so, you know... if I were to do, however, if I if for the audience watching, if any of you are interested in doing that, uh, you can contact me. I am Taya underscore Taya underscore Hunter Cat on Discord, and I will gladly help you get the particles you need, the props you need, and I will help you run the show. But I will, but I will let you run it, and you would have to be someone passionate enough to actually see through it. Fair enough. And I was going to say, in that regard, um, you know, there's it, it'd be kind of cool to see, you know, more people use uh, those types of worlds for those reasons, because um, with how many performance communities there are, there's so many different worlds when it comes to that. You know, so I guess one of the questions, you know, let's talk about the world side a little bit. Um, so what came into mind when, you know, cause you talked about how it's, you know, an opera house, you know, and it has like, it's, you know, chandelier and stuff, but what kind of like originated the designs themselves? Cause you know, most opera houses, um, cause you know, yours is kind of like more purplish, um, like hues and whatnot throughout the world. You know, most are typically like red and gold, if I remember correctly. So what kind of like what kind of led to that design choice for that design choice specifically it's more of like kind of like a bluish purple uh my world creator his name is renvo capital r and then invo for those who want to look him up on, on vr chat but um he actually kind of picked that shade of blue it's more i wanted it so our color scheme is blue black gold and white for the most part, those are like kind of our theme colors for the group itself. And I was actually originally going to go with red. However, once I designed the curtains, I actually drew my logo in the middle of the curtains. The red just seemed too harsh for like a moon design. So I went with blue and the blue just, I thought it looked nicer, especially since blue is a lot more of a calming color. It's a lot more relaxing. Um, so it just stuck as for the actual design of the the physical world itself uh how that happened is i made blueprints of kind of like a base idea of what i wanted because i i i design i specialize in character design not buildings and then rinvo essentially just ran with it and he he just made all this beautiful beautiful stuff and just kept showing it to me and i'm like wait that looks fantastic keep it and that's just kind of how it all worked I gotcha. I mean, that's, it's a really, you know, it's an interesting design choice to say the least. Um, so I guess kind of, uh, kind of the 180 the topic back into the community side a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So because you are an 18 plus safer work uh, community. So out of curiosity, and this is a, it's a weirder question, but I, it's just something I'm curious about because I know there's so many different types of age groups within VR chat. So off the top of your head, uh, if you know the answer, um you know what's like who's or uh, what's like the highest of the age like group that you currently have like i guess who who's the oldest uh when it comes to like you know doing everything uh like performance wise in the community or staff or just in general well the oldest person in staff would be my husband because he's 34 and if i don't have enough staff i just draft him to do it for me because he's he's actually very supportive of what i'm doing uh he like gives me lets me use the index on the weekends and whatnot uh just for specific or on the weekdays for specifically my events even if he wants to really play video games or he has uh homework for college because he actually started college recently he's going into uh finance actually but um, the oldest overall would be, I believe, 37. And they're one of my guests. I gotcha. I was like, it's, it's definitely uh, definitely an interesting thing because I've always, because I know there's so many different types of age groups when it comes to VR chat. You know, you have your kid, your minors, your kids, mm -hmm. whatever. You know, you get to like your early 20s, late 20s, early 30s. And then there's some players that are like, you know, 50, 60, even a 70 year old I've met once in VR chat was the most wildest thing. So I was, it was just a genuine curiosity question at that point. Um, you know, and to kind of like, kind of go into that a little bit more, like, so would you say that when it comes to the performance types in your community, would you say there's a pretty even variety or is it kind of like more of one type of performer versus another? 
I definitely say there is more musicians and singers. However, they're usually the people who go to open mics in general, where you would usually see dancers would be like kind of the club scene. And I like, don't get me wrong, they're great, do what they want, but I would love to see more dancers outside of the club scene, if that makes sense. So that's kind of why I look for dancers. I actually do some VR dancing myself. I'm an absolute amateur, but most people don't have legs and they can't tell. <laughs> Fair. That's valid. I, I could not hold a step to most uh, VR dancers, so totally get that. This is why I do a podcast. Um, but anyway, um, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, out of curiosity, how many, I, I don't know if we talked about the exact number, but like out of curiosity, because you said you've been around for a couple months, you know, how many events have you guys done so far? If you had to put like a ballpark estimate on it. I'd say maybe seven eight ish the first ones we did i think we did like two or three before project community uh and like that the people who'd usually join were mainly like friends of mine or my staff so we didn't have many people it was usually like five people but after project community it's been like 30 30 30 every event so we haven't been doing events for too terribly long it's just we've been around for a while and then i wasn't showing for anything so i kind of stopped and then I actually started again after I had something to show for. So yeah, I'd say like six to eight ish, if I were to guess. I gotcha. So still, still fresh on the heels of you know working out events and stuff. Um, you know, because there's one of the, one of the follow up questions into that. So about how many about how many events do you guys do? Like let's say let's say like a month. Do you do like one or two a month or is it more like sporadic? Like it just kind of happens when it happens. Um, Cause it, you know, you talked about the open mics Are those more like pop-up open mics or are they like scheduled set for certain times of the week? So our events are bi-weekly. So we do one one week and then the next week off and then we do one one, one week, but they are all 7 p.m. Central time to start. 6 p.m. Central for staff, just so we can get in there early, make sure there are no problems. No one's having issues logging in and what in or crashing etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh they're, they're definitely set the whole reason we do it bi-weekly instead of like weekly and whatnot like everything's going to be bi-weekly it's going to be within the same week essentially uh is so it's because oh we do our stuff on saturdays and most events are saturday so it's just so no one has to kind of like pick and choose between our group or another group like you still have time to see everything else although i am actually starting to go into the discord calls a bit more just so we have at least something and like people to interact and whatnot so they don't get too bored but everyone is extreme uh, but i'll be honest uh no one minds the bi-weekly everyone is extremely patient they're excited for whenever there's another open mic uh some of them want me to kind of like dm them directly when it's going to happen because they're not really paying attention to the server and we still get consecutively uh, 30 people each. And honestly, I kind of want to give that credit to uh, Cookie. I don't know if you've... Have you met Cookie? I believe you have. Uh, uh, maybe. Uh, she's, a, she's a performer friend of mine. And um, she actually kind of she actually announces in her group that, hey, we're having an open mic. The Midnight Opera is having an open mic. And the first time she did that, I was just getting a flood of request to join the Midnight Opera, request to join the Midnight Opera, and then those pe same people started coming into the world, and I'm just like, where are you coming from? I mean, it's fine, but where are you coming from? Because, like, before that, again, it was only, like, two, three people that were, like, maybe my friends outside of staff coming. I gotcha. No, I mean, realistically, right, there's, um, when it comes to that, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of good places to advertise when it comes to you know, certain types of events and certain communities. Hello, everyone. Real quick, just want to pause the episode real quick. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and, and I hope you're enjoying the content. However, I do have some amazing people to thank because they were so graciously to help fund the throne for the new setup. We are currently over 40% as this episode is getting edited. I do want to thank some individuals, all, of course, the anonymous gifters, but specifically, I want to thank Volkasect, Blep, 
Emma Torch, Down Lyric, Asha Derora, KJD, Monk42, and Sonicman7708 for all the amazing generosity. You guys are absolutely a blessing, and I can't thank you enough for the amazing stuff. If you would like to you know, help me over on Throne to help crowdfund the new setup to improve some of the content you see, uh, make sure to go check that out. But let's get back into the episode. Woo! Um, so out of curiosity, you know, and this is something I'd recommend for any type of co community out there. Um, have you ever looked into, I think it's called VRC Timeline. I never heard of that before. I'll have to double check the, the name of it and post editor. If it's, if it's incorrect, just throw it on the screen. So VRC Timeline is a, um, it's an actual, like, I think it's like, it's, it's a site or an app, one or the other, but essentially what it is, it allows like communities to, um, and performance communities to like throw events in there and it'll like have a giant timeline for like the weekend and whatnot um, of what it is. It's definitely something I recommend when it comes to like performance communities to check out because there's always something going on on this platform always, but you don't really okay. hear about it unless you, you know, see it for yourself, you know, and um, yeah, like I've I never heard of it. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to DM it to you when I if I remember the name of it. But there's a certain app that or a site that's really good for that, um, you know. And you never know because you know you might be able to take advantage of it yourself with Midnight Opera. You know, I'm not sponsored by them by any means. There's uh -huh. there's gonna be a, there's a lot of episodes where I've done this bit. I'm not sponsored by any of these. There's a really it's just really good stuff. But yeah, so I guess one of the things I wanted to talk about for a little bit, you know, so you you have a bunch of different like effects for your stage. You know, uh, if I remember correctly, there was like the fog roll, uh, like the smoke or fog. Is it was it smoke or fog mm -hmm. first? It's technically the same thing, but I guess fog would be more accurate as it's closer to the ground than all over the place. But we have, at the moment, we have uh, flowers falling down from the sky, my, a money shower. The money shower was actually my world creator's idea. When I first got it, I didn't know what it was. He actually put it under bo under the same name as one of the outer particles because he wanted to surprise me. kind of liked the idea, so we kept it. Um, we can set the stage on fire, which is which is personally my favorite. I, it's like uh, sitting around the fireplace, you know, telling stories, <laughs> except the whole world's burning down. And then we also have, we do have spotlights. It's just sadly those are going to be PC only, although all the other effects are actually quest compatible and optimized. Um, there's just no way to really have a spotlight without uh, negating the optimization on the quest side quite a bit. And we focus on optimization and quest compatibility. But yeah, it's... Oh, and rain. Rain's the last one. I was... oh, rain, fire, money, fog, and rose petals. So yeah, I would say that's... It's definitely cool that you have different, you know, effects. Not only in general, but, you know, also quest compatible. Um, so I guess one of the things that I wanted to touch base on... So what uh, what kind of gave you the idea of adding those particles to, like, the stage in general? Um, I actually work at a 18-plus, like, strip club. I don't do any stripping. I'm married. I'm, I keep it appropriate. Over there, I only do stage dancing. But they had those kind of effects, and I thought that was really cool. And I thought it'd be really nice to have on my stage and actually have special effects and I thought of and I thought and of course they're kind of lower quality for mainly optimization purposes but I also think it adds to the charm of it being a theater like you know all the school plays with like the really low quality props and like special effects and whatnot I gotcha so um because I'll say it's definitely you know you need to have those you know especially if they enhance um the the performers themselves so I guess kind of to go into that because you know is it mainly used for like dancers or you know do people like request to use those effects or how does how does that work uh i, I occasionally i occasionally i did get a request before uh his he does uh heavy metal and he ha and he does like a uh, heavy metal guitar and he really, really liked the fire so we put the fire on for him as he was like ripping the guitar oh gosh he, he was phenomenal he was absolutely fantastic but uh for Sutton, he's one of my dancers he does uh, he's done ballroom dancing for like 10 years and he actually flies up in the air and whatnot i actually had him uh perform during project community when kind of like performing there and advertising us uh he he likes using the special effects he'll usually use the fog i usually use the fog and rain 
uh, just because it just kind of matches the music a bit more. But I'd definitely say for now, it's mainly dancers, but uh, some uh, musicians do actually like to use them. And once we actually start having our main shows and whatnot, I am going to be giving my staff specifically uh, options for custom particles to kind of enhance their performance and have something a little bit more special. We are also going to have an option at some point for personal backdrops. So like image URLs, and that would be like a backdrop instead of just the videos. Yeah, custom backdrops would definitely be an interesting concept um, because realistically you could make anything work in that regard. Um, So that's definitely an interesting concept uh, that I'd definitely be interested in seeing in the future with you guys. So I I, I guess one of my, you know, because we are kind of running a little bit low on time. um, You know, I guess one of my one of my final questions, um, because you you guys said you worked with No Friends Friends Club uh, when it came to like Project Community and stuff. So uh, out of curiosity, are you like open when it comes to like community collaborations, like other performance groups or um, I guess like what what type of. plans if there are any do you have in mind when it comes to that um if we have so we do technically have some collabs one of them is space jamboree although our collab is more of a poster exchange than anything else um and and another group would be the uh the idol anime people uh rito kayuki owns that um and essentially i'm letting them use the world for whatever they want and i would help them with their stuff if i get the chance i've just been so busy i haven't been able to help them with their anime which i actually want to see kind of grown that they have a little vr chat anime uh idol group anime going on um i am open to collaborations for if they are something like that like letting you just kind of use the world i don't really do anything so like anyone can use the world and some people i would consider an actual partnership some people would just be like you can just use the world for fun However, when it comes to actual collaborations, um, you would have to be 18 plus. I ma- the only exceptions I would make are is if you have adult events, adult only nights, essentially. So like you're 13 plus, but you still have like adult only nights um, or you are specifically a performance based group. So like you do your own plays and whatnot, then I would be more willing to work with you. It's just because we ourselves are 18 plus and we are actually collaborated with like an adult strip club we have to kind of keep it for the most part 18 plus very very rare exceptions i gotcha that's that's definitely you know it's cool that you're willing to you know open the doors to the world to other communities and stuff that's a you know it's it's Mm -hmm. good it's good that you're doing that so you know definitely kudos in that regard um well i guess you know that's realistically that's about all i have um in that regard, I would say, but I guess before we end it off, you know, and call it done deal, um, you know, I want to give you the chance to essentially tell the audience, you know, where can people find Midnight Opera, where they can find you, um, you know, essentially anything that you want in the description uh, or up on screen. Um, but yeah, feel free to take it away. All right. So for in regards to our, let me find it. VR chat group. You can find us our VR chat group, of course, on the. You can just look at. You can just look it up on uh, VR chat Midnight Opera. Our group will pop up pretty much right away because we are the only one. We are the only Midnight Opera group minus also my staff group. You can also find us on Twitter. Or it's X, but no one calls it X. Uh, we do have a Twitter. We don't really use it. However, if you come to our events and you don't want to be part of the Discord server, that is another good way to like kind of send us your pictures. Just kind of tag us. We are Midnight Opera VR. Uh, we are uh, called at, we are at Midnight Opera VR on Twitter. Um, we are working on we are working on a Twitch. We are planning to stream our open mics and whatnot. So. Uh, we ended up making it the Midnight Opera instead of the, because I started making the account under the Midnight Opera, and I messed up the email. So I had to redo it, and I had to add an extra E to the the. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. And then eventually we will also be on TikTok. That would also be like at Midnight Opera or at the Midnight Opera, one of the two. I don't I don't recall, but eventually we will start actually posting there a lot more. We're just kind of working on getting more videos first. And then, of course, if you ever wish to 
you support us, we do accept donations. We have a GoFundMe, which helps fund the world itself, as I am still actually paying that off. I'm paying in increments. Um, I am one person. Uh, we have this whole thing on the stage where I set, I put the money on, and then I put the fire on, and that's basically a visual representation of my paycheck. But all money, all donations go directly into the world itself, whether it is expanding the world, finishing paying off the world as it is now, or getting art commissions to put up within the world so you have something a little more to look at. I gotcha. Well, I guess first and foremost, uh, definitely thank you for coming on the podcast. It definitely was an interesting, you know, time learning about the midnight opera a little bit more and learning a little bit more about you know what you do but yeah no thank you for coming on the podcast for sure of course of course i'm glad i'm actually very grateful to you have been here especially considering like you've been having a lot of technical difficulties on your end <laughs> yeah it it, it happens <laughs> well and then of course i actually come here and my quest dies twice <laughs> <laughs> it's all good it happens um but with that ladies gentlemen everybody inside and outside the ballpark this has been episode 28 of the nova notes podcast i want to thank you so much for listening watching depending on what platform you're on uh, make sure to go check out uh the midnight opera all their links will be uh down in the description um but i do want to thank you so much for watching if you liked what we were talking about uh definitely make sure to leave a comment down below tell us what type of performance type you like you know there's a lot of them out there you never know you might be interested in something that maybe a lot of people are interested in or not could be one of those black horse type of you know performances but if you did enjoy make sure to leave a like leave a comment down below and of course if you're coming back to watch some of the other episodes why not hit that subscribe button you're already coming back anyway well and to end it off i want to thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next episode take care and peace bye welcome ladies and gentlemen to no